Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always. And today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new SAM system that was added to DCS World with the latest open beta update. That is the SA-5 Gammon, surface-to-air missile, or from the Russian designation S-200. This missile was developed in the mid-1960s as a counter to high-flying and very fast American bomber and reconnaissance aircraft like the XB-70 Valkyrie, the SR-71, then the A-12 Oxcart, as well as uh, B-58 Hustlers when their mission profile changed from being low-level penetration up to very high and very fast penetration of Soviet airspace. So, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and fly a couple flights against the SA-5 to show off its very, very long range for a very early SAM system, as well as show off what I think is the best tactic for defeating the SA-5 Gannon here on the Syria map. Now, even though it was developed in the mid-1960s, the SA-5 did not see any combat use until very, very recently during the 2011 Libyan Civil War and, of course, the Syrian Civil War, of course, which this map is based on. In fact, an F-16I Sufa was recently shot down by an SA-5 Gammon when the crew of that Sufa did not evade the missile properly. The SA-5 has also been shot from Syria, failed to detonate, and landed on Cyprus as well as a number of other notable incidents, such as the Iron Dome system in Israel actually shooting down an SA-5 shot at another F-16I Sufa. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the mission editor and take a look at what we're going to be doing today and how to put together an SA-5 Gammon site for your missions at home. Okay guys, here we are in the mission editor. We currently have a single SA-5 Gammon site located at Damascus International Airport. Now, the Syrians actually bought the S-200 SAM system in the 1980s, but they quickly went out of vogue for the Syrians and they put them into storage. But very soon after the start of the Syrian Civil War, the Russians actually helped upgrade and refurbish all of those SA-5s that were in storage in Syria, upgrading them to use a newer and more advanced radar type that allows the SA-5 that we actually have here in DCS world to be more advanced and more deadly than an SA-5 that would have, say, been produced in, say, 1965, for instance. So the Syrian Army Air, Air Defense Forces typically deploy their S-200 batteries around Damascus. It's their longest range and most advanced SAM system that is currently in the inventory of the Syrian Arab Army. Um, as a result, the SA-5s that you hear being shot around in the news media typically come from the Damascus area, and you can see that it's quite a long way to get a weapon to fly all the way from Damascus and to land on Cyprus out here, 180 nautical miles-ish. So let's go ahead and zoom on in to our SAM site here. We're currently using the prepared SAM site just to the north of Damascus International Airport. And if we go to the satellite view, we can kind of see the revetments a little bit easier. So to actually put together an SA-5 site, you want to make sure that you have the search radar, the tin shield search radar, the square pair tracking radar, and at least a single launcher in there as well. When you are practicing against a new type of SAM system that you're trying to defeat or evade, I recommend just placing a single launcher with your SAM sites. So that way you only have a single missile coming at you. So that way you can make it a little bit more clinical and break it down a little bit easier for yourself. Of course, we have multiple launchers set up today to create a full-on SAM system. If you look on Google Earth, this particular SAM site just to the north of Damascus International is actually an SA-2 site, but it's going to work just fine for us today because it's only a game. We also have a couple little trucks and things added to the SAM site just to kind of beautify it a little bit more, make it a little cooler. If we zoom on out again and we go back to our altitude mode, on our map, we can see we have two F-16s out here. We have a high altitude F-16 and a low altitude F-16. We're going to hop into the high altitude F-16 first to show you guys um, the actual range of the SA-5 because it will launch on you from very, very far away. 
Then we'll hop into the second F-16 and kind of show you guys a tactic that I've come up with that kind of is the best way to defeat an SA-5 if you don't have very many wingmen with you. If you have more wingmen and more members of a flight or a strike package, these tactics are going to become more and more easy and basically just spread out versions of the tactics you would employ against, say, an SA-2 site. So with that in mind, let's kind of talk about a little bit about why the Israelis typically attack Damascus through Lebanon as opposed to attacking Damascus through over the Golan Heights area. The reason being is the fact that the terrain around the Golan Heights and up into the northern Golan Heights area here is going to be a lot flatter. As a result, there's a lot less terrain masking and the Syrians actually have a major issue when it comes to placing their air defense radars and, and SAM batteries in Damascus is because of the fact that there is a very tall mountain ridge that runs right along here. So if uh, Israeli jets approach Damascus through the Beirut area, through Lebanon, they have nice terrain masking against the Syrian radars for quite a long time. And in the second F-16 that we hop into today, we're going to actually be looking at how to use that terrain advantage to actually take out a very long range SAM like an SA-5. Of course, because these SAM systems are so long range, there is, we can definitely see that uh, the SA-5 from Damascus covers a large portion of Israel itself, specifically Ramat David Air Base. And that can definitely be a challenge in terms of taking off and immediately getting an SA-5 shot at you. But in reality, I don't think a Syrian uh, army air defense battery would actually start shooting an SA-5 at an Israeli jet the moment it takes off. Because they don't want to provoke Israel and create yet another international incident in which the Israelis come in and totally smack the Syrians. So as a result, that is why for the most part, the Israelis also always kind of come off head north, then in towards Damascus from Lebanon. Another reason that's a little bit more macabre is the fact that the Israelis do not want any falling wreckage of missiles and or uh, aircraft parts if an aircraft does unfortunately get shot down from landing on Israeli territory itself and endangering Israeli civilians. Unfortunately, the Israelis would rather endanger the lives of Lebanese civilians and of course Syrian civilians than their own. But I think that is true of basically every country on earth. So I don't think we can necessarily fault the Israelis for that. With that in mind, let's go ahead and hop in and uh, get started with the demonstration. Okay guys, so here we are in an Israeli F-16C heading towards Beirut from off the coast. And we currently have our Sear Point 1 situated right on top of our SA-5 Gammon battery. We can see on our raw equipment we have a nails from the tin shield search radar from that SA-5 site. So we'll go ahead and increase our altitude and try to bait that SA-5 into shooting at us as early as possible. So let's go ahead and turn off our autopilot. And we'll go ahead and hit the burners. And we'll just gently raise that nose up. The, like I said before, the SA-5 is an incredibly long-range missile, and it flies incredibly fast. The very large body of the missile and its boosters allow the missile to accelerate very, very fast and fly a very long range. Because as we, of course, talked about earlier, it was originally designed to go after aircraft like the XB-70, high altitude B-58s, A-12 ox carts, SR-71s, things of that nature that SA-2 uh, guidelines were having a very difficult time reaching out and touching because those aircraft were flying so high and so fast. As of course you guys know, the SA-2 is very much capable of engaging the U-2 Dragon Lady, and the SA-5, of course, is very, very much capable of engaging S uh, U-2s as well. We're currently 77, it's now 76 nautical miles from our steer point, and for the most part, up at around 30,000 feet, my testing has kind of come to the conclusion that the 
Sam should start to shoot at you around about 60 to 65 nautical miles. So let's see if that holds true today. There it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the SAM site itself and see if we can see that missile launch. So it looks like these two SAMs are being readied for the launch. So let's go ahead and watch them from this perspective. There it goes. Very cool. So we could see the boosters, the four boosters are arrayed around the missile, as you can see on this SAM here. See the boosters between the stabilization fins? Honestly, it looks like a giant Phoenix missile to me, or like a giant uh, uh, Hawk missile as well. And then the boosters separate. That's where the smoke gets a little bit thinner. And then the main uh, rocket motor of the missile itself actually fires. And if we take a look at it, it definitely looks like a larger Hawk missile or even a AIM-54 Phoenix missile. Very, very similar design, but very large missile. It's even larger than an SA-2 of all things. And you can see where the rails that the boosters were held on, where they separated, and now the missile is flying under its own power. And looking at our cockpit, that's a 70 nautical mile missile shot from that SA-5. We can kind of take a look at the map here and kind of do a rough estimate. Yeah, about 70 nautical miles or so from that missile shot. So that is a very, very long range SAM system. However, it's a very early SAM system. And if you're paying attention and you take proper evasive maneuvers right away, you should have no problem trashing the missile. So this is also one of those reasons why the Israelis attacked the Damascus area from Lebanon because of that mountain ridge that runs just to the north and west of Damascus is we can drop down below that ridge, get that slant range between us and the mountain and the radar to actually trash that missile very, very easily without having to dive completely down to the deck. So let's go ahead and try it out. So we did not trash the missile there. We just simply put the missile radar into the blind spot of our raw equipment. So let's come this way for the mountains. And let's take a look at the missile itself and we can see just how fast it flies. Let's see if we can find it here. Ah, there it is. And the missile is currently at a speed of 1800 knots and the booster is still firing. So it is still accelerating rather quickly. So let's head back to our cockpit. And there we go. We were able to defeat the missile by putting these mountain ridges that run through Lebanon and adjust to the northwest of Damascus between us and the radar and allow for terrain masking very, very easily without getting all the way down to the deck. Whereas if you had done this over the Golan Heights or over northern Israel, you would have had to go all the way down to the deck to actually trash that missile. So when performing seed operations against an SA-5, definitely come through the Damascus-Lebanon area rather than right from northern Israel. And if we start to climb back up, we should get a second launch from that SA-5 site. And we can see that missile is 100% trashed. It is gone. Once the missile is trashed, the missile should self-destruct. But as we know, with these older refurbished SA-5s that have been in storage for so many years, uh, sometimes they don't self-destruct. And with the angle that that missile was shot at, it definitely makes sense that that missile could have continued all the way on out towards Cyprus and crashed into a mountain in Cyprus to, uh, of course, scare the bejesus out of anyone who was around the crash site. So the area that we're trying to get above here is this mountain ridge right here. Now we have line of sight with the radar. The radar just fired another SAM. So let's take a look. There it goes. Boosters separate. Rocket is on its way. And all we got to do is just get below that ridge line and we're good to go.
now below the ridge line. And there's another SAM launch. And you can see we're not getting below 5,000 feet with our evasion maneuvers. And we can see that there is no SAM flying at us. Pretty darn cool stuff. So let's go ahead and actually try to engage that SAM site with some harm missiles. You guys should have noticed that uh, at that very long range from that first missile shot, even in pre-brief mode, they wouldn't have been able to reach out and touch the tin shield or the tracking radar with our harms, unfortunately. Alrighty, we are now spawned into our second F-16C. We're going to be approaching the Damascus coastal area from a much lower altitude in order to keep the ridge line that runs along the length of Lebanon and around Damascus area between us and the radar for as long as possible. This is the tactic that the Israeli jets um, use all the time and have used extensively all the way back to the 1970s to attack the Damascus area. So let's go ahead and we got our master arm on. We'll go to air to ground master mode. We'll turn on our harms. We'll go to our weapon page and we will go to PV and then we will adjust one, two, nine, enter our new code for our radar to attack an SA-5 tracking radar. Well, that should be good there. We're in pre-brief mode. And so what we're going to be doing here is we are going to approach Damascus as close as possible while keeping that ridge between us and the radar station at the SA-5 site, pop up, get our harms off in pre-brief mode, and hopefully get an SA-5 to actually shoot at us so that way our harms can track right into the tracking radar. Now, what we can do is if we feel that SA-5 is getting far too close to us for comfort, we can dive below that ridge and then pop right back up to get that SA-5 to shoot at us again to get a nice good target for our harms to track in and engage the tracking radar for this SA-5 site. We're also going to have our targeting pod up on our right hand MFD. So that way we can always have a very good bead on whether we have a mountain range between us and the radar site. If we see a mountain rather than flat desert of the Damascus area, then we know that we're in business. We'll turn off the autopilot. And we're getting in closer and closer. Just double checking. Pre-brief position mode, SA-5, cool. Just for when we're looking outside of the cockpit, doing evasive maneuvers, we'll turn on our HMD. And at this point, we can still see that we definitely have that mountain ridge between us and the SA-5 site. The reason why we are coming in at a lower altitude rather than trying to just put our harms onto the target in pre-brief mode as long of a range as absolutely possible is simply because of the fact that the SA-5 will outrange our harms no matter what altitude we're at and at what angle we actually fire those harms to loft them out to the SA-5 site. The SA-5 just has far more rocket fuel. It goes a heck of a lot faster and a heck of a lot further and will beat the range of our harms every single time. I'm sure you could potentially find an edge case where maybe the harms would beat out the range of an SA-5, but for the most part, this is a very good rule of thumb. So we'll start to push our afterburners up. We got our master arm on. Try to get as fast as we can, lob our harms out there, and then pop up above the ridge and get an SA-5 to launch at us. We're currently 45 nautical miles from our target area. Gain a little bit more airspeed. 
That was Betty telling me to pull up because of the ridge, not for the harms. Just an FYI there for anyone who might get confused by that. There we go. SA-5 tracking radar is looking at me. Harm. And harm. Just to make sure we get a kinetic kill on that tracking radar. We're going to come off to our right-hand side and try our best to get that SA-5 to shoot at us. There we go. We got a nice mountain ridge right here that we can duck under if we need to. There we go. And at this point, if we take a look at what's happening here, we can see our two harms are definitely on their way and they are getting very high as they loft up to come down on top of that SA-5 site. But the SA-5 is going to be going very, very fast at me. So hopefully this um, engagement will work out well. If we feel like it's getting close, we can dip below the mountain, then pop back up and try to get that uh, tracking radar to acquire us again to give a good target for those harms. Now, the way I'm going to evade this missile to try and get as much time out of it as possible is I am actually, instead of going to the, just continuing on on the current heading we're at, I'm going to kind of come back here and then maybe come out here as well to try and get the missile to turn to bleed speed off of it as well as to open up the range and make the missile work harder to get to me and take a lot longer to give our harms plenty of time to hit that tracking radar. So, full burner. We're not trashing the missile, we're get, putting it in our raw equipment's blind spot when we roll 90 degrees on the knife edge. We're coming out here. There it is. We can take a look at that SA-5, it's still lofting and it's flying out and the rocket motor is still firing. It's still gaining airspeed. That is definitely scary. Alright, let's take a look at the situation now. So if we take a look, our harms are passing the SA-5 and we can see that it is not looking good for my jet at the moment. The harms are at 1300 uh, knots, and the SA-5, well, it's actually closer than I thought it was gonna be. The SA-5 is at around 2000 knots, and the rocket motor is still firing, which means that he's still gonna be going faster and faster. And the reason why we're going down to a lower altitude, A, we can terrain mass, try and trash this particular SA-5, but also we can drag it down into more dense air to slow it down. So let's go ahead and trash this missile. It is now trashed from the terrain masking. And we've got our harms falling down on the target area, but these harms no longer have a target. They're just working off of the memory. So we're going to try to get that SA-5 to shoot at us again, which we can see on our raw equipment here. The SA-5 tracking radar is now trying to come up with a firing solution for another SA-5. And we can see that the 5 is superimposed on top of the tin shield raw indication. And so now we're giving our harms a really, really nice target. And we can see they're falling right onto that prepared SAM site. And let's see if we get a missile launch. There's a launch. Woo! Right underneath that harm. And our harm is absolutely going to get there before the boom. Boom. Took out the radar for the SA-5, and that is how you do it. That is how you defeat a very long-range SA-5 Gammon using tactics that the Israeli Air Force uses in real life, from attacking from the Lebanon-Beirut area towards Damascus right off of our right-hand side. It makes a lot of sense when you look at the geography of Israel, Lebanon, and Syria in attacking from Lebanon is going to be your absolute best bet against a very long range, but rather um, older type SAM system like the SA-5. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I love talking about topics like this that really uh, tie into real life geopolitical events. And uh, please give it a like and a subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.